Hi, Hans Lemerson here, and today I'm going to show you a program counter, a branching capable program counter, which I'm going to be using on that thing over there, my lovely computer. Uh, you've actually seen it in action before in a previous video. It was part of my uh, programmable looping counter you see here, and it's over here. It's this thing. but when it's integrated in a device, it's a little bit hard to show the operations. So, that's why I made a separate one over here so that you can see it in action. Currently, it's set to all zeros. But with the flip of this lever, it will start counting. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, the way it's arranged, the digits are running, or the, the littlest digit is on the left here, but if you turn around, then it's... then it works. Uh, it, it doesn't matter all that much in a computer whether the little bit, whether the smallest bit is on the left or the right, so long as you remember what, which it is. Because when you're when bus when wiring turns corners it can flip around and all sorts of weird things happen. Uh, but yeah, this counter can be made to go in either direction. Uh, the basic principle behind uh, behind this is that the counting algorithm uh, th there, there's an algorithm for binary counting. It operate it works by doing selective inversion. If you, it basically in, it starts at the smallest bit, and inverts all of the bits until it hits a zero. When it hits a zero, it inverts that, but then doesn't continue. The lowest bit here is a zero, so when I tell it to count, well, it inverts then stops. But now, when I tell it to count again, it will, both of these will invert, and it'll be zero one, like that. And now there will just be a single inversion. And now, here's where the real adventure happens. When a bunch of ones are in a row, then you get a huge long chain of inversion. See, all of those inverted, uh, and it stop. And where that one is, there used to be a zero. Okay, now. The way, the way the mechanism is set up is that whenever a, whenever this, uh, the orange line, whenever, yeah, the, the orange line controls these pistons, which load, uh, of, which load a value into this memory cell. Uh, it's currently set up so that, uh, the, when the orange, when the piston powered by the orange wire fires, or it moves moves into position, the cell gets written, or the value that gets written to the cell is the opposite of what's in it. Everywhere that the cell holds a zero, a one is standing by to be written. And everywhere that the, that the memory cell holds a one, a zero is standing by. But you can't count just by inverting everything all the time. It has to be uh, conditional. You have to choose when you invert it. And that's where these pistons come in. When the piston when these pistons are retracted, they cut this wire, and so the signal will not continue any further. The so uh, when I press the button, this piston will receive a signal, but the next one will not. Whether a piston is extended or retracted depends on the state of its memory cell. This is a zero the memory cell here is a zero, which means that the ta the inversion should not propagate on to the next bit. And so we see the piston is retracted. Now, if we count, you see that single piston popped down, and this inverted. And now it's showing the inverse again. Hi, Barricade. Uh, and, Im very importantly, this piston is extended. 
So you can see that the next pulse that comes through here is going to trigger both of these pistons. The the orange line pist both the the two orange line pistons here will uh, extend when I press the button, and both of these cells will invert. See, two of them fired, and then just one will fire, and now three will fire because it's a it's continue, continue, stop. So this actually makes a sort of interesting pattern. One, three, four. One, two, one, three, one, two, one, five. Whoa, whoa, that was a bit more. Yeah, it, it yeah, it forms a pattern. Uh, it's actually similar to the pattern of the half inches, quarter inches, and eighth inches on a ruler, if you look at the length of the lines. Okay, but just being able to count, just being able to go from one number to the next number, isn't quite enough to be useful in a computer. I mean, it can, it can help you go from one, one instruction line to the next, but a slowly traveling pulse can do the same thing. It's you, you need a bit more, which is why this is branching capable. Uh, this memory cell is it's a very nice one, because it allows inputs... But what I love, love about its flexibility is it allows inputs from two different directions. So this is a dual input memory cell. Uh, when the when the piston moves down, it cuts the wire, but also is in position to conduct the charge from the repeater. And when it retracts, the cell stays in whatever state the repeater was. So uh, these greens are the inputs. And when I turn the purple line on, then whatever these inputs are become the output. So I can do something like this, and when I like the number, I just pull back, and there it is. So this device here can both count, it can do binary counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, but it can also, on command, load a new value in, which is what I was doing over here with the proceed to the next number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then jumping to new numbers. When it jumped to a new number, the counter over there, which is like this one, had the purple line fire, and it just lo it just loaded in whatever uh, yeah, wh whatever da data it had. This is useful in a in a computer because it allows you to do things like I in normal operations, you'd go execute in instruction line one, then line two, then line three. But, if, but sometimes you want to either do a loop, so like jump back to line 5. So 5, 6, 7, 5, 6, 7, 5, 6, 7. You might want to do that. Or you might want to skip past a line, like uh, if this is true, jump... Yeah. yeah, if A equals B, jump past line 10 and, and go straight to 11. Don't do what's on line 10. But, uh, oh yeah, this... Because there's been some unreliability with pistons in the past, especially with high-speed experiments, uh, I've included a nice Obsidian emergency reset line, which, uh, in case the pistons drop their blocks, like that, a one-tick pulse will make pistons drop their blocks. So the device doesn't work very well when the pistons, when the blocks are just sitting there. So if some if some something disastrous like that happens, uh, I just press that, and it triggers all pistons to extend, then re and retract, and everything is good as new. I've yeah I, I I've experimented with, with some different designs and and I've made it more stable than my earlier versions. So this this thing can actually 
when I when in my demonstra first demonstration, this was just running. Uh, it was running on a 12 tick cycle, but it can actually run even faster than that. That's a pretty fast counter. Uh, and it's actually probably faster than any application you would need, because all the other machinery computer in a computer really wouldn't, wouldn't be able to keep up with this. That's pretty fast. Well, for for redstone, that is. I, I'm sure you could, you've seen faster counters in real life. Okay, but I bet you want to know how to build one of these. So, I practiced building one really quick. Or, yeah, I practiced building one over there so that I, I could build one without stumbling too much. So, first you start with the memory cell. This is commonly referred to as the basil flop on the, uh, on the art, in the RDF, because it was made by a member named Basil Shep, and it's really versatile. Uh, yeah, right, right here I'm adding the, uh, load new value input, and this is the output. Uh, the output could actually go kind of anywhere. I just I just like to put it here, so it's input goes this way, output goes that way. It's a nice cyclical thing. But if you want, you could figure out a way to make it go this way. Yeah, but something like that could work. Okay. And now, the the pistons need to go in. The piston and the inversion circuitry. So this is the basic setup for the in for the inversion, where one input is the opposite of whatever is in here. And it'll blink really fast like this, which can actually cause problems. Uh, so I I highly recommend, for stability's sake, that the the repeater on the inversion side be set to four ticks of delay. Okay, now the piston for the yeah, the orange piston. I I like to color code all of my. Uh, all of my all of my things so that different colors do different functions. One one color per function is my uh, general plan. And purple. Version. Yep, it blinks. Now we need to make this uh, three-dimensional, so I'll start adding circuitry off to the side. Uh, this bit is important because, or the, the the orange line has to zigzag has to zigzag up and down so that it can get interrupted by pistons, and the pistons have to be on a different axis than and the then the or and the toggle control pistons have to be on a different have to be yeah they have to be aligned with this groove rather than the bulk of the machinery so you have to but they still have to be controlled by the cell so right 
put that on there, and a, a single bit of repeater dust of redstone dust will then trigger uh, power this. And then a block goes up here and powers that, and now this dust is the it is at the same state as the memory cell. So the piston will be ret retracted when it's zero. And when it's one, yeah. and when it's one, the piston extends. Okay, that's that's how you make the cell. These are the parts of it, and this is the uh, yeah, this is the basic design. If you're using World Edit, it's actually really convenient because this corner over here, cor if you go from this corner to that corner, that selects the entire thing, and Let's retract that piston. And you can do... BAM! And there's a... a 4-bit adder. And I forgot a part. You actually have to... You kind of need that bit there. There we go. Hmm. Ah, yes. the The input has to be. Uh, you you have to make a pulsed input for this. Uh, because if it. Yeah, if it's just constantly on, then... Oh, hey, cool, it's actually just counting really fast. So I guess that does work. Earlier versions, it didn't work, so it was unstable. But I guess for this version, uh, since there's enough delay with these uh, four-tick repeaters, you'll be able, if you just hold the signal on, it will count stably. I think. Is that stable? Yeah. It doesn't seem to be making any errors. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Ah. Uh. So, that's the branching cap capable binary counter. It can Triggering the orange line makes it count, and triggering the purple line makes it uh, load in a new value. So it's two very important functions in one device, which make it useful for the program counter in a computer. Okay, Hans Lemerson signing out.